Hello, family. Welcome to another edition of Cooking with Tamasha. Today, we are going to be baking a vegan, well, cupcakes. A vegan red velvet cupcakes with an old-fashioned ermine or ermine. I don't know how you say it. I think ermine. Frosting, which is a, a frosting that's not done much these days because we just don't make it and so I'm gonna duplicate that today so we're gonna start off making the frosting and then while that is setting up we're going to make our cupcakes so here are the ingredients for the frosting oh before we start I want to tell you make sure you like um, subscribe and share make sure you turn on the notification bell so you can see when um, I post new videos um, I thank you all so much for your support and um, here we go okay so for our first ingredients we have um, organic cane sugar uh, unbleached flour I have uh, full fat coconut milk and um, nut milk. I used coconut or coconut. I used walnut and um, cashew milk that I made. Um, and then we have um, a half a cup of Earth Balance butter and a half a cup of coconut oil. And here we have about two to three teaspoons of clear vanilla extract. This is a half a cup of um, both of the milks. Again, it's full fat coconut milk. And um, I use cashew walnut, but you can use almond milk or whatever nut or seed milk you would like. Um, and then we have a quarter of a cup of um, unbleached flour and we have a cup of organic cane sugar. This is vegan. You want to, I never knew there was a such thing as vegan sugar, but white sugar has, um, they use bone char to process it. That's why it's white. So... Um, this is organic, non-GMO, and you want to make sure that your bag says no bone char. Um, so here we go. We're going to get started with that. And then, um, oh no, let me show you the other ingredients. So then we have on the table, excuse my messy table, we have three cups of organic cane sugar. We have about three quarters of a cup of beets. We have a quarter cup of homemade applesauce. We have three cups of cake flour that has been sifted. I have a cup of the uh, walnut cashew milk. I have four tablespoons of cocoa um, powder, which is raw cacao, and I will be sifting that as well when I get to making my flour mixture. I have um, a half a cup of um, coconut milk that will be heated um, till it's hot, almost hot. Um, I have, uh, want to see three, no, two, two and a half, two and a quarter teaspoons of baking powder, um, which I um, will post the entire recipe uh, in the description box in case I got the amount wrong. This is pure vanilla extract and it is about two to three tablespoons. And then I have two flaxseed eggs right here. Um, a flaxseed egg is one tablespoon of um, flaxseed meal to two tablespoons of spring water mixed together and I let them sit for about five minutes and as you can see it forms a gloopy 
consistency almost like egg and then I have my um, my muffin tin already lined up and then one more thing that I did not measure out but we will be using a teaspoon of sea salt so I'm going to be using a teaspoon of sea salt into this flour mixture all right so I'm going to set up the camera so I can show you what I'm doing and I will be back. All right, I am back. Got the camera set all up. And so what we're going to do first to start on this ermine, old-fashioned ermine um, frosting, I'm going to take the quarter cup of unbleached flour, put that right off in my pot. Now I'm going to put both kinds of milk, so I have my cashew walnut milk, which is quite rich and creamy. One day I will make that and put that on the video channel as well. Then I have full fat coconut milk. You want to make sure that it is full fat because light coconut milk will not work. And then I'm going to put my cup of organic granulated sugar. Give that a mix really quick. And I'm going to put this on medium low heat. And I am going to begin whisking it. Um, and it should take about 10 minutes to come together. So let's put that on the stove. And let me grab my trusty whisk and we will move over here. It's kind of goofy now, cold, but we want like a pudding consistency. Make sure I get all that flour in there. <clears throat> so, I wish there was something that I had to talk about. Because um, I know you guys don't want to listen to me ramble so I will be right back when this gets to the proper consistency but this is what it looks like now and we uh, see how it's um still very liquidy so I'll be back in about 10 minutes when this is turned to pudding all right guys I am back and my roux is complete my pudding like substance and it got thick like pretty quickly at first it wasn't doing anything wasn't doing anything and then all of a sudden it came together so I'm going to let this go for a couple more seconds there you go that's what you want that stream see so now I'm going to take this off of the heat I did that on about three for the first eight minutes and then I turned it on five making sure that I stirred constantly because you don't want anything burnt on the bottom. I apologize for the crazy focusing because that is my Samsung Galaxy doing its thing. Okay, so this is the consistency that you want. And I'm going to leave this. I'm going to put it on the front right here. I'm going to, so I can reach it. And I am going to be coming back to it periodically to whisk it and make sure that it does not get a funky skin on it. So the next thing we're going to do is take a medium-sized bowl. I have two. 
because in the end, you are going to put ice and water in the large one and set the smaller one on the top. Okay, so what we are going to do now is take our half a cup of Earth Balance and our half a cup of coconut oil, place that into our bowl, mixing bowl, with our two tablespoons of clear vanilla extract. You can use pure vanilla extract if you prefer. It just alters the color of the frosting in the end, but there is nothing wrong with it and it tastes exactly the same. All right, so now I have my handy dandy hand mixer, which I hardly ever use, but in this instance, I'm going to use it. I'm gonna put that spatula down and whip away. So this is nice and lovely. If you are going to use the stick of Earth Balance, then um, cut them up into um, small pieces so that it is easier to whip them. And now that I have this all combined, I'm going to turn it up. Now what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to take this empty bowl and put ice and water in it. To the ice bath and now that that is working I'm going to come back and stir my roux stirring it often helps it with not getting a skin and also it um helps it to cool down quicker because we need it to be completely cool before we add it into our um, butter and coconut oil mix. So now what we're going to do is start on the cupcakes while that is cooling down. So I'm going to grab my three cups of egg flour sifted my cocoa powder or cacao powder <clears throat> my 
my baking powder, not baking soda, but baking powder, and my teaspoon of salt. And like I said, I'm going to get you the measurements for the baking powder. It will be in the description box. But I know this is three cups of um, Swan's Down cake flour. This is four tablespoons of Hershey's cacao powder. Um, one teaspoon of sea salt, and I believe this is two and a half teaspoons of baking powder. So, I'm going to grab my sifter, handy dandy sifter. I'm going to put my cocoa powder in the sifter and sift that right on in. Make sure that I get all the lumps out of that cocoa powder because I want this to be nice and smooth. All right, almost done. Oh, that was my, was my cooking timer that I had going for the roof, but of course I finished way faster in about 10 minutes. All right, and also for the cupcakes, I have my oven preheating on 375. So I'm going to add the baking powder. We can go ahead and sift that too. Why not? And add my teaspoon of sea salt. not like this autofocus deal that the Samsung has going on but whatever okay so as you can see I have my salt my baking powder my cocoa and my flour I'm just gonna give that a quick little combine here all right Make sure I get all the way to the bottom so I can have my chocolate all the way through. All right, it looks good to me. There you go. I'm gonna set that aside. Get my spatula off again. Now, I'm going to be using the stand mixer for this. So I'm going to grab the stand mixer bowl. All right, there you go. Now, some people like the paddle attachment. I prefer the whisk so i'm going to be adding the whisk attachment and to my bowl i am going to be adding my three cups of sugar i'm going to pop this coconut oil in the microwave for about i don't know 10 seconds 20 seconds I just want it to get warm, not necessarily hot. But coconut oil melts at a relatively um, low temperature. So, 20 seconds ought to be good. And it is. Alright, so I have my 20 second melted coconut oil. I'm going to add that into my bowl, my stand mixer bowl. All 
All right. Next, I'm going to add my three cups of organic sugar. I'm going to focus. All right, there we go. Three cups of organic sugar. Again, make sure that it says organic and no bone char. I am going to unplug this one for a second and move the stand mixer down here. Plug her in. All right. So have these two things combined. Now, I'm going to attach my whisk attachment. And let her go. I'm going to let this go, combining it well, and then I'm gonna turn it up to like six or so. Let that combine. I'm gonna push it up. Just let it do its thing. Matter of fact, I'm gonna turn it down, lower it, and I'm gonna just scrape the sides real quick. I know you can't see because I moved it off camera, but I'm just scraping the sides now. I grabbed the food processor because we are going to make our liquid mixture. In the food processor. So what I'm gonna need for that is the three quarters of a cup of beef. I use slice, you can roast them, you can boil them. I just couldn't find a real fresh beef today when I went out. So, I'm gonna add three quarters of a cup of the canned beef. I'm gonna add a quarter cup of applesauce, which I made, homemade applesauce. I'm also going to add my vanilla and my flaxseed egg mixture. Again, that's two flaxseed eggs, and like I said, it is actually two teas or two tablespoons of flaxseed meal and four tablespoons of water, and I just let it set up until it got the consistency of an egg. Add that in there. Okay. Now I'm gonna turn this one off, because I'm gonna be turning this one on. So you want to process this until it is nice and smooth. So I'm gonna start off on low. And then kick it up to high.
I have no idea how long that was. I'm going to say 30 seconds to a minute. But what I'm going to do is open it up and scrape down the inside. Make sure that any large pieces that got caught on the sides get off in there so they can have their turn at the blades as well. And I'm going to get this off the I want all this goodness. Try not to make a mess, but I do know. <laughs> all right, and I'm going to turn it on again, start on low, and then kick it up to high. all as much as you can because this is your goodness. Alright, now I'm going to lift it back up, start it on low. Turn it off. 
scrape down the sides again. Make sure you get all the way to the bottom. Oh. Knock my thing off. Luckily, the head did not go in. Now what I'm going to do is now I'm going to turn it off, let it down, and add some of my chocolate flour mixture and I'm going to start it on low. I know it can be tempting, you want to turn it up so it can get mixed in quicker, but if you do that, you will have a whooping mess everywhere. There will be flour flying everywhere. Now, you can also do this with a hand mixer, but it takes a little longer. And I am going to add almost all of the chocolate flour mixture, but not quite all. I'm going to save about two tablespoons for the end. So I'm going to start this on low again. Let it get slightly incorporated and then kick up the speed a little bit. All right. Now I'm going to put in this last little bit of flour and cocoa. Oh, I forgot to scrape my sides down. I'm going to scrape down the sides, making sure to go all the way to the bottom. Give it one last mix. I just turned it up on high to make sure I got everything. But I don't want to over mix it just until there's no white bands left. So that's why I'm going all the way to the bottom.
All right. Now I'm going to take my prepared muffin tin. Since I only have one, I will be doing this one at a time. However, if you have two, feel free to do two at a time. Move this back over because I need it from the frosting. Okay, and I am going to get my handy dandy ice cream scooper. I am going to spray it lightly. Use some coconut oil cooking spray. Because coconut is the medium that I use in the batter. Take the beater off and remove the bowl. And we have a beautiful red brown batter that does not taste like beets. So now I'm going to take my ice cream scoop. And I'm filling about what I imagine to be about three quarters of a way full. Now, you could probably do this in a cake, too. I just decided on cupcakes because they're more um, handy. burnt pieces lingering around okay so there's my 12 I'm gonna put these in the oven might not take that long but you really want to do it until the toothpick comes out clean I'm going to get three toothpicks because I want to check at both ends and in the center. So I'm going to put this to the side for now and come back to my 
butter and ice water mixture. It's a little more solid now, so what I'm going to turn it on and do is just whip it up slightly. temperature down a little bit soon. So I'll let that sit for a minute and I'll be right back. Hello. Okay, I am back. <clears throat> I have four minutes left on the cupcakes, but what I wanted to show you guys is remember that leftover coconut cream and or coconut milk, full fat coconut milk and the um, cashew walnut milk that I had left over? Well, you don't know, but I had some left over. Anyway, what I did was I put the coconut milk, um, the remainder of the can, in a mason jar. I added some agave and some maple syrup and just a tad bit of the cashew, cashew walnut milk, maybe about um, a quarter of a cup. And then I added about two teaspoons of Ceylon cinnamon. Shake it all up. Now I have an amazing coffee creamer for in the morning. So there you go. I wanted to show you guys that. The, um, I'm going to put this in the refrigerator. The cupcakes are almost done. Um, they smell amazing and chocolatey, just like red velvet should. Um, so I am going to, I should have put this over there. Oh, um, I am going to test them at the 20 minute mark and see if the inside uh, is cooked by doing the toothpick, toothpick test. And I have my three toothpicks out already. So I'm going to get my oven mitt and be ready. Now the final countdown for the 20 minutes. I'm going to put my heat absorbing mats down so that I can check these cupcakes. My three toothpicks. Nine seconds left. All right, here we go. All right. This 
smells so good. Oh my gosh. I hope that they are done. So, I'm gonna toothpick clean. Toothpick relatively clean. Not quite. So I'm going to put these back in for about three minutes or so. I did four minutes. So we will see and I will be right back. All right, I am back and I took the cupcakes out of the oven. Four minutes has passed, so I'm going to check them again. Voila, that did the trick. Toothpick is relatively clean. All right. So what I'm going to do now is let these sit in the pan four or five minutes and then I'm going to take them out and let them continue to cool on a handy dandy rack. <clears throat> So I will be letting them sit up in the pan for five minutes and then I'm going to take them out and put them on the racks. So I will be right back. Okay, I am back and the cupcakes are now cooling on the rack and I am back for the second batch because I have to work in batches and I only have one cupcake pan. So this time, to save myself some drama and headache, I'm going to spray this lightly with Baker's Joy, and then I'm going to place my cupcake liners in the pan, and that just saves me some headache later. You don't have to use Baker's Joy, you can use regular Pam or whatever you happen to have. I am one short. <clears throat> and that just helps when you have um, little spillage or whatever. It helps to make the cleanup of the pan easier. So, I have this all loaded up. And I am going to grab my batter. And... Start filling again. It's just so good. And you can eat it raw. Feel free to taste it because guess what? There's no raw eggs in here. So, completely safe. Although I don't know why raw eggs was an issue or problem. Well, I guess I do because they are so horrible for you. But I remember being a little girl. Before I was vegan, and that was the best part of baking day, is being able to lick the bowl and the spoon and all that. Alright, so I got 12 done, and I'm going to throw this in the oven. Now, the last time it took 24 minutes, so I'm going to adjust the time. Okay, I have no idea what happened, but as I was saying, I adjusted the timer 
so that it will bake for 24 minutes. And what I did was started to work with my roux frosting. So I took the um, vegan butter and coconut oil mix out of the ice bath so that I could work with it. And I started adding my roux in, my sweet roux, about two, three tablespoons at a time. Adding it in. Really ugly stuff, but I promise it's delicious. I'm gonna get all that in there. Okay, hopefully no more uh, stoppages. So, now I have this incorporated into well. On high. And I'm going to sit this back in the ice bath. All right. Have 15 more minutes on the second batch of cupcakes. So, I all right, I am back, and what I have done is cooked all, baked all of the cupcakes, and I transferred my frosting into the stand mixer bowl. And then I set that bowl in cold water. So after I washed it, I cooled the bowl down with cold water. And then I put the frosting in there. And then set the whole entire thing in the ice water bath. So now I am going to whip it on high. Make it, see how light and fluffy that is? That is your Armin frosting. You're just gonna let it whip. Make sure that it is beautifully light and frothy. It is just gorgeous. All right, so while you guys weren't looking, I had already previously whipped it for like five minutes to get it to that consistency. So I was going to pipe the cupcakes, but I decided against it because I want a more rustic <clears throat> look to it. So what I am going to do is to take the cooled cupcakes Right, I have five of them, but I ended up with 31. So, what I have here, let me push this out of the way, and move this over so you can see. I got some rainbow sprinkles. <clears throat> And I am just going to put some in a small bowl, like so. And what I'm going to do is take these cupcakes, dip it in the frosting, and then into the sprinkles, like so. <clears throat> you can even put a peek on it if you'd like into the sprinkles. And we'll 
do one more. All right. So there you go, vegan cupcakes with old fashioned ermine frosting. And I decided to throw a little rainbow sprinkles on there because I am extra. So, all right, I want to thank you guys for watching um, my vegan red velvet cupcakes with old fashioned ermine frosting dipped in sprinkles <laughs> um the video cut off before i was able to say thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate each and every one of you and again if you like this video please remember to like it um subscribe to the channel and share the video and i will keep more videos coming for you um again enjoy i hope you make this if you make it please post the pictures on my facebook page tamasha hunter i would love to see that or tag me on instagram at goddess segment one um and i hope you guys enjoy happy baking and happy eating i love you all bye